Okay, so today we're going to be solving inequalities. When we solve them, we are going to, like I said, solve first to get the actual inequality. Yesterday we just gave you the inequality. Today we're going to solve for that inequality. Then we're going to do what we did yesterday. We're going to graph that inequality and we're going to write it in the interval notation. So the new part today is actually going to be solving. The old part that we're going to bring in from yesterday is graphing inequalities and writing solutions in interval notation. Hopefully, as we go through this, if there are any questions from yesterday, then um, we'll clear up some of that for you. All right, so you should have a notes page in front of you. You have all the problems that I'm going to do. I expect you to write down the steps just like I'm going to do. You're going to be graphing and writing interval notation right along with me. So our first problem, just like solving equations, we're going to solve inequality. There's only a couple of exceptions that we need to watch for. So again, my goal is to get x by itself, just like with solving. So I'm going to subtract 9 from both sides. So I have x is less than 6. Okay, so this is where we, this is the new part. So yesterday, because you learned that because it has a less than, it's going to be an open circle at 6. Kind of those numbers less than, so I'm going to be shading to the left. Okay, then what was probably new for everybody was this idea of negative infinity and positive infinity and figuring out how to write interval notation. So infinity, remember, never ever has parentheses, or never ever has a bracket. So because we're going from negative infinity up to 6, I'm going to have a parentheses, my negative infinity, comma, then the right bound is at 6. And because it's an open circle, I want a parenthesis. So if you're getting confused on interval, interval notation, remember we always read left to right. So if you read your, gra your graph left here to right here, notice that's the way it appears up in my box as well. The so left to the right, and then you have to decide whether you want to do parentheses or brackets. Okay, let's take a look at the next one. Oh, my inequality sign went away. Let me fix that real quick. There we go. All right, so I have x minus 3 is greater than or equal to negative 6. So again, to isolate x, I'm going to add 3 to both sides. So I have x is greater than or equal to negative 3. Okay, so I like to graph first. X is greater than or equal to negative 3. So I have an equal to sign this time. So that means at negative 3, I need a solid point. I want numbers that are larger than that. X is greater than that. So I'm going to shade to the right. Okay, so on the right, we have positive infinity. On the left, here is where we have negative 3. So when I go to write my interval notation, I know it's going to involve negative 3 and positive infinity. We talked about positive infinity and negative infinity always have the parentheses. At my 3, because it's a closed circle, it needs to have a bracket. Okay, the next one. Okay, for this one here, we have 3 times x, so I need to divide both sides by 3. I have x is less than or equal to negative 9. So I need a solid dot, solid point at negative 9. I want less than or equal to, so I'm going to shade to the left. So down here I have negative infinity, up here I have 9. So my interval notation, I'm going to have a negative infinity and a 9. Because I have a solid point at 9, I have a bracket. Infinity always has parentheses. Okay, our next one, we have x divided by 2. In order to undo that division, I need to multiply both sides by 2. So my 2 cancels, so I have x is less than negative 6. So at negative 6, I need an open circle. I need a shade to the left. I want less than. Okay, again, thinking about open infinity or negative infinity, negative 6. 
Those are my numbers going in the box. Okay, then infinity times parentheses. I have an open circle of negative six, so it will also have a parenthesis. Okay, so those are all pretty straightforward. Those first four are pretty straightforward. Um, I'm going to bring this one in because there is one difference between inequalities and, and equations that you really have to be careful with. In this problem here, I have to divide by a negative eight. So divide by a negative eight. Okay, now, alarm bells should be going off in your head because when you multiply or divide by a negative number, we need to flip the inequality. Okay, we got to flip our inequality. So I have x, I need to flip this inequality right here. So now it's going to flip the other direction. I have negative 5. Okay, that's super important. Alarm bells should be going off in your head. You should be here. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Okay, so anytime you multiply or divide by a negative number, you've got to flip that inequality. Adding, subtracting, doesn't matter. Multiplying, dividing, you have to flip that inequality. So at negative 5, you need an open circle. X is less than that, so I'm going to shade to the left. So thinking about negative infinity and negative 5 shows me how I'm going to put it in my box. I have an open circle at 5, so I need to open parentheses there. Same thing, infinity is going to have a parenthesis. Okay, so there's an example of, of dividing by a negative number. This next one here, we have x divided by a negative 4. Well, I have a negative 4 down there, so I need to multiply both sides by a negative 4. Okay, here's the alarm bell. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Okay, we should have alarm bells going off because we are we are multiplying by a negative number. So when I multiply by a negative number, we just talked about we've got to flip the inequality. So I'm flipping my inequality, and then I have an 8. Negative 2 times negative 4 is positive 8. Okay, so we have x is less than or equal to 8. I need a closed circle at 8. Less than, so I'm going to the left. Thinking about my negative infinity and my 8. There's the order for the interval, interval notation. I have a closed circle down here at 8. That means I need a bracket. And then for my infinity, again, always has a parenthesis. All right, so let's make these a little bit more complicated. So let's just throw our steps in there. This is why we did boot camp. All right, so first thing, if I want to isolate the x here, I'm going to have to add 7 to both sides. So I have 4x is greater than 12. Divide by 4, I have x is greater than 3. Notice I did not have to flip my inequality because this time I was dividing by a positive number. So x is greater than 3. So I need an open circle at 3. Shading to the right, so I'm thinking about 3 and positive infinity here. So my interval notation, I have a 3 and a positive infinity. For both of those cases, I'm going to need parentheses. Open circle on 3, so I need parentheses, and infinity always has a parentheses. Okay, next one. Next one. So to isolate x, I'm going to have to subtract 2 from both sides. So I have negative 2x is less than or equal to negative 10 minus 2 is a negative 12. Okay, I have to get x by itself, so I need to divide both sides by a negative 2. Okay, whoop, whoop, whoop. There's your warning bells, right? We're dividing by a negative number, so we've got to, got to, got to flip that inequality. So I have x is greater than or equal to positive 6. x is greater than or equal to positive 6. So I need a closed point at 6. I'm going to the right. Okay, so I'm thinking about 6 and infinity here. There's my order, 6 and infinity. Okay, then on the left here, my 6 is a closed circle, so I need a bracket. My infinity always has a parenthesis. more examples here. Okay, so first first thing we have to do here, I'm going to move this up so there's a little bit more room. 
I'm going to need to distribute that 12. I'm going to distribute that 12 to everything in the parentheses. So I end up with 12x minus 36. And then I still have my plus 2x is greater than 6. So I did my distributive property first. Now I'm going to combine my like terms. So if I combine my like terms on the left hand side here, I have 14x minus 36 is greater than 6. I'm going to get x by itself, so I have to add 36 to both sides. So I have 14x is greater than 42. Divide both sides by 14. I have x is greater than 3. x is greater than 3. Okay, so that tells me, kind of ran into my graph there, but I need an open circle at 3. I want x is greater than a number is larger than 3, so I'm going to shade to the right. So I'm thinking about 3 and positive infinity. Those are my numbers that go in my box. 3 and positive infinity. Infinity always has a parenthesis. My 3, um, I'm sorry, infinity always has a parenthesis. My 3 has an open circle, so it's also going to have a parenthesis. Okay, the next one. Again, we have another um, distributive problem. But I threw this one in here to kind of remind you, you've got to really watch your signs. So I'm going to be distributing a negative 3 to both of these terms there. Okay, so watch our signs here. So I'm going to do this kind of slow. So we have x. All right, just bring that down. So negative 3 times x is a negative 3x. Then I have negative 3 times 2 gives me a negative 6 less than 4. Okay, so now I'm ready to combine my like terms. Okay, so on the left hand side I have those two x terms, so if I add them together I have a negative 2x minus 6 is less than 4. I need to add 6 to both sides. So I have negative 2x is less than 10. Divide by negative 2 Anybody hear those warning bells? They should be going off in their head right now. We're dividing by a negative 2. So when I do that, i got to flip that inequality. I saved you from doing the sound this time. The x is greater than negative 5. So I flipped my inequality right at the end. Okay, so at negative 5, I need an open circle. The x is greater than. So I need to go to the right. Okay, so I'm thinking about negative 5 and positive infinity. So there's my numbers in the box. Infinity always has a parenthesis. My negative 5 has an open circle, so it's going to have a parenthesis as well. Okay, next one. And so I have a little bit more room. Okay, so we have distributive twice on this one. So I need to distribute my 4 to start with. So I have 8 minus 4 times the negative x is negative 4x. Less than or equal to. And I need to distribute my 5. So I have 5x minus 10. Need to get all my x's to the left, all my constants to the right. I really would on these, some people would add 4x to both sides, but it's really so much simpler if you can always get your x's to the left side. Okay, it's, you're going to be more consistent in reading your graphs correctly. So I'm going to move my variables to the left and my constants to the right. So I need to subtract 5x from both sides. I have 8 minus 9x plus or equal to negative 10. Okay, now I need to get that 8 back to the other side. So I have my negative 9x already all together. I need to subtract 8. So I have negative 9x less than or equal to a negative 18. Divide by negative 9. Okay, you hearing the warning bell? So that should be flipping our inequality. So x then, oops, sorry about that. x is greater than or equal to positive 2. Got a little messy down there. x is greater than or equal to positive 2. Okay, so at 2, at 2 I have a solid point. Greater than or equal to, we're heading to the right. So I'm thinking about 2 and infinity. <clears throat> Sorry, 
Think about 2 and infinity. So we have 2 and infinity here, positive infinity. Okay, so infinity always has a parentheses. My 2 has a solved point because of the equal sign. So it's going to have a bracket on the left. Okay, last one. Last one. So, first step. We need to distribute. 2 times 4 is 8. Take my, my times 2 to the negative x, so I get the negative 2x. Less than or equal to 3x minus 7. Again, I encourage you to get all your variables to the left side. All the variables to the left. So I'm going to do minus 3x. I have 8 minus 5x less than or equal to negative 7. Okay, so now I need to get the 8 to the other side. So I'm going to subtract 8 from both sides. So I have negative 5x is less than or equal to negative 15. Alright, variables on one side, constants on the other. Ready to x by itself, so I can divide by a negative 5. Warning bells are going off. So x, I did that again. So x, you know, flip that inequality, which is divided by a negative, is greater than or equal to a positive 3. X is greater than or equal to a positive 3. So we have a positive 3. I'm going to put a solid point because we have an equal sign. Greater than or equal to is going to go to the right. So we're talking about 3 and infinity. So in interval notation, we have a 3 and an infinity. Put a parenthesis on the right because of infinity. On the left, my 3 has a solid point because of the equal sign. So it has a bracket. All right, so next you're going to be practicing with the graphing and identifying the interval notation and all of that. Um, when you finish that, please, please, please check your folders. Many of you need to turn in your um, solving formula stuff. There were two parts to that. This was from Friday. Okay, there's two parts. There's a matching. And there was, um, individually, you had something to do. It was, it was really a multiple choice. It was like one of those uh, puzzles, like a joke page. Okay, I need that. I only have that from like two people out of all my students. So maybe four, because I think there were partners on it. But you need to get that stuff turned in. So go ahead, if you have that, go ahead and give that to the sub. Um, she will get that to me then. I'm constantly updating your grade. Tonight, or today, I, I'll go through your online stuff that you turned in and try to send you any feedback if I see any concerns. Uh, but be constantly looking for missing papers because I have to in, I have to submit interim grades by Friday. Okay, so on Friday I have to submit your grades. I am coming into school almost every night so that I can try to keep up a little bit with you. Um, so turn in whatever you have and I will constantly collect that and constantly update yourself.